All right, guys, welcome back to another uh, book review. My name is James. And I'm Brush. And today we're going to be doing part one of The Goblet of Fire. So The Goblet of Fire is like the first Harry Potter book that really amped it up. So I think from now on we're going to be doing uh, them in parts because it's really hard to read like 40 chapters in a week. Um, so yeah, we are doing through chapter 23, which for those of you guys who don't remember what happens in what chapter, is right after the Yule Ball, basically. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, what do you what do you think of? I, I don't want to do overall book thoughts yet. I feel like we'll save that for part two. Okay. But what do you think so far yeah, compared to the movie, characters, different things like that? Okay, so this one I gotta I gotta kind of think. So the movie, I mean, I don't I don't quite remember this being like you know one of my favorites. No, like movie wise. Well, actually. Goblet of Fire? No, 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 not Goblet of Fire. No, Order of the Phoenix. No, no, no. Order of the Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. That was the one. Goblet of Fire, yeah, that's true. Goblet of Fire is like one. I do. I'm liking the book, though. No, no, no. Yeah, definitely. The They had a lot more towards. Yeah. Well, just overall. Honestly. I really liked how much more time they spent with the whole Quidditch thing. Yeah. That I was totally really cool. get how you couldn't do it in a book, but they spent a little. They spent you like mean in a six. Movie? Or a movie, but I, they spent like six chapters on it or something. Oh, yeah. And they I spent liked that. A whole bunch of time on it. Um. It was just cool. It was just like kind of straight world building side adventure sort of thing. Yeah. But I was totally into it. And they introduced all the different characters and them like describing the magic and, you know, like the, how they had the leprechaun tents and yeah. different things like that. I thought that was really cool. Well, it really, I mean, this is the thing, like Quidditch to Harry Potter is such a like big thing in his life. Yes. And so every time they bring it up, I like that they indulge us with, you know, what it is like it's a sport and so yeah. you want to get that feeling like it's a sport yeah you know and so we got the tents and stuff we got the you know the fans the favorite you know seekers and whatever you yeah. know what i'm saying like, i like that they went that. into it though that was cool oh yeah no no that but that's that's cool you i know, feel like whereas, everybody can relate to that no yeah yeah well i mean i think a little bit like even if you've only been to, like a high school game or something like there's something about yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah going to a sporting event that i thought they captured really well on the page that i feel like most people can relate to yeah I agree. I totally agree. And because it's, I feel like it's a much bigger thing in the books, you can really feel like when Harry Potter talks about it and when he, you know, anytime he's looking forward to it, you can really feel that like childlike excitement from him, you know? And it's something that helps him. It kind of pushes him forward. And it's something that like, yeah, it's something that he can like look forward to in his like times at when he's down and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, what did you think of the opening? Because they spent a lot... Of, they did, like, a whole chapter on Voldemort sort of thing yeah. in the opening. Okay. Which I thought was a very interesting way to open it. I wasn't sure what to think, to be honest. Okay, well, compared to the movie, I liked it not just because it, like, explained it a little more. Because, like, in the movie, at least for me, it was just very, random. very confusing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I had no idea what was going on. And, you know, you can, like... It's implied that it's like Voldemort or something. You got. I think they they could have like that's the thing about some of the movie stuff that really frustrates me is some of it's logistic. Like okay, you can't do the Quidditch World Cup. Totally get it. Yeah. But stuff with like them not spending more time in the Shrieking Shack last book, and like stuff with Voldemort. I'm like you very simply could have spent five more minutes with this and it would have been very clear. I don't know why you didn't. Yeah, like they cut it very very short. It's now like, I don't know if that was studio or whatever, but yeah, of course. But I mean, regardless, I I don't think we can. You no, know, of course, yeah. But like you know, because in the in the movie it was like a, a few scenes or something, whereas in the book it's like it's like a whole I don't know how many like years and weeks that they went through, right? With the uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, the Will, old guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I or forget. Or? I just thought it was a really cool way to open a book because every other book is open on Harry Potter. And they were just like, oh, Will. And you're like, what? And it was like this very odd yeah. like way to open it. And then you're like, oh, I guess this is to do with Voldemort. And then like hinting about how everybody died. Like, oh, they had no wounds. You know? Yeah. I was kind of picking up on Vada Kedavra, whatever, killing curse sort uh-huh. of thing. I thought yeah. that was cool. I thought that was well done. Yeah. Like, I was actually very confused in the beginning because I didn't remember that the movie started off that way because okay. it was such a small scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, wait, what is happening, right? Like, who is this? Like, okay, yeah. we're, are we going to the backstory of Voldemort or something? Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But then I started to remember, oh, yeah, there's that little scene. So it was cool to, now that I, like, knew, okay, there was, like, that little scene in the beginning. Oh, now they're elaborating on it, right? And it yeah. was cool because, you know, you get to see, how should I say, like, the effects or Voldemort's, like, 
presence and like the presence of like the muggles almost like, yeah right? yeah because and like, how it confuses them yeah like, like, that was oh, kind of oh, cool okay yeah. like i guess they just died and they were suspecting him of killing them yes all that yes I, I really liked, too, the way, like, so far they've done all the stuff with the Death Eaters. Because, dude, like, when you watch the movies, they show up and it's, like, 9-11, man. Like, they do, like, a terrorist attack and then they leave and everybody's like, eh. Where it's, like, the book they explained a little bit. So I was yes. like, okay, some, like, drunk, crazy Death Eaters and they, like, got rid of them. And then there was, like, oh, somebody did the Dark Mark. And there was a bunch oh, of yeah. press about that and people freaked out about it. But it wasn't, like... Whereas the movie was like, oh, we lit the whole camp on fire. Well, and did all this crazy was, stuff. Felt, and you're like, what? Yeah, it felt like a drive-by. Yes. Like, <laughs> they were out. Like, and everyone was like, wait, what? Yes. You know? But, yeah, yes. in the book, they did it... I think they did it a lot better. You know? Yes. And, and obviously, because they explained a lot of it. And, you know, in the movie, you're relying on visuals a lot of times, I feel like. Yeah, and they had them with these, like, KKK hoods. Yeah, and so you're... <laughs> and turn all like, this stuff, and you're like, whoa. Yeah, because you're... Yeah, you're trying to pick up on things, and you're like, okay, what are the characters saying? Who are these people? What are these magic things? What's the symbol? Right? Whereas in the book, it it takes its time a little more. Yeah. And whether or not, I don't care, whether or not they couldn't have done that in the movie, or they could have. They could have. Regardless, I think the book just does it way better, you know? And I just like it. Because it didn't, because then it just, it doesn't make everybody feel so dumb. Because I remember being in the movie being like, how is no one else freaking out? Like... How is the wizarding world not being like, uh, whoa, guys, we need to make, like, a big deal about this and figure this stuff out? Yeah, and even if they tried to show it, like, it just didn't feel that way, you know? Like, the Death Eaters didn't feel like it was that too was an extreme. impactful moment. Well, it was also way too extreme. Like, yeah. I feel like they went way too all out and were, like, destroying everything, whereas this kind of felt more like... All right, like, yeah, there's some stragglers and they did some crazy stuff and we kind of calmed it down. And then there was this weird... Like, symbol thing at the end. And I yeah. liked that. That felt more, like, real. Well, because you remember the um, the all-out attack from, like, the Death Eaters in, like, uh, the Deathly Hollows and stuff? Yeah. I honestly thought it was something like that. Yeah, it felt like that. Right? It was like, yeah. it was like an attack attack. Yes. But in the book, it did feel a little more like, oh, like... Who are oh who are these people oh the that's Voldemort simple you know wait a second yeah it's kind of more like that yeah yeah and I like that and I'm obviously I'm waiting for the payoff like towards the end of this book with like the oh like Voldemort because then it, it feels like that as opposed to like opening with like you know the twin towers getting knocked down and people are like there's terrorism like four months later and you're like well yeah dude yeah. we just saw this like exactly duh um so I liked that a lot better I liked. That we had already met Cedric Diggory. Yes. It, it, yeah, it, it kind of cements it in your mind because... Well, also, it makes me feel way less sus that he's going to die. When I watched the movie, I was like, new character. Yeah. I don't think he's going to make it, but it's like he just feels like, you know, Parvati or whatever, one of the other, like, background people. They're like, oh, we're going to talk about him a little bit more in this book, and then maybe we'll put him back. It's, well, yeah. It, it, it's a little smoother as opposed to, like, here's this new character. Yeah, he doesn't come out of nowhere, and so... You know, you feel like, oh, he's part of the crew a little bit now, right? He's part of the cast, you know? Whereas, yeah, yeah, in the movie, he kind of just shows up, and it's like, okay, new character. I honestly, personally, didn't think he was going to die, because I had no idea, but... Um, I really liked Bill and Charlie. Like, I don't know why they... Whatever, I'm going to stop blaming the movie, but I really liked uh, Bill and Charlie being, like, part of the crew at the beginning, (laughs) so that they don't show up in Deathly Hollows Part 2, and I'm like, who are these people? (laughs) Exactly, like, wait, what? (laughs) don't know why they did that <laughs> dude well yeah i mean i'm not <laughs> but anyway the either way on the movie i liked just... it because i if i did this i could do this all day with this book uh on the movie but i really liked them and like the time that we spent once i love spending time with the weasleys yeah oh it's great i really like it yeah because you get that i mean you start to understand like like how harry looks at them yes. right i mean they're really like a they're a cool family you know, they're, yes, awesome. they're like his second family it's, it's cool. You get to see more of that. Yeah, it was cool. Um, what did you think about, like, the new schools and different... Th- I mean, yeah, Beau Baton or... Yeah, so Beau, Beau Baton. Baton or whatever. Okay. However you I, say no, it in French. We're just saying sorry, I'm, like, not gonna say it. I'm not going to say it. Beau Baton and uh, Durmstrang or whatever? Durmstrang, yeah. Okay. I liked them. Yeah. Oh, they were cool. Yeah. I remember in the, um, in the movie, their rival... It was a little I different. I didn't really, yeah. I didn't really like their arrival in the movie because it felt a little too, I don't know, 
almost like festival like and it was kind of like a little too much I feel like yeah whereas in the book it felt a little more like okay you know these are the new schools they're arriving on their you know whatever different obviously it was it was kind of showy showy but it was like it was different yeah I, I just liked it because in the in the movie I don't know it just felt a little more like they're in the school already and it was like you know all over the yeah. place and I was like okay well you know yeah once again I feel like sacrificing cinema for for some groundedness yeah and which just, I think is gonna be something that I just like about the book so much more than the movies kind of overall yeah cause it just feels like a lot of times things come out of nowhere like I when I'm watch, starting to watch the movie I don't I'm not expecting more schools, right? Yeah. And so when they start coming in with these... And they set up the other schools in the Quidditch thing, too. Yeah. Like, even the book did that, where they, like, were like, hey, there's this whatever, and they had, like, some, uh, you know, Fleur or whoever, like, saying some French thing. They're like, oh, Hogwarts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, So, yeah, I I did like it It just felt more real. I could relate. It's like, oh, everybody go outside and greet the news. It's like, yes, this is, like... Because I think the genius thing about Harry Potter that I've been liking so far is that it takes things that everyone has experienced at any school even like obviously private school I have more experience but any school like they yeah. take these things that you know like okay you have this dance yes. or whatever and then they like add this kind of flair of magic to it and I like that a lot I think that's something that's really powerful about the book and makes you really heavily relate to it even if it's like oh yeah they arrived on a gigantic you know horse carriage yes. thing like you still are but like still, oh you can still you have those to like boring elements yes. in the middle where it's like oh I can relate to, I understand that it's like you know they may not have you know arrived on that horse but they arrived on a bus and so I yeah, can exactly you know. exactly so and and yeah so it, it just throws you off a little bit in the movie but I like that no and I yeah. like the way they did all the they set up Victor Crumb and yes. just everything like I like that I actually knew what the heck was going I don't even think I knew it was the Quidditch World Cup to be honest yeah the Victor Crumb thing like. Um, because things happen so fast, uh, Victor Crumb, honestly, like, he didn't feel, like, as big of a deal almost. Well, they, like, set him up really big, too. The way they, like, revealed yeah. it was him and everything was really cool in the book. And in the movie, I was like, wait, he's still in high school? Yeah. Well, <laughs> things were happening so fast that it was hard to, like, keep up, you yeah. know? Yeah. But, you know. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I have been liking much, that. But. I mean, I like his character so far. I liked the little detail of him, like, going to the library Mm-hmm. I kind of called that, but I liked it. Like, I liked the... They they added, like, something like that. And yeah. even... Oh, what did they say? They said something about how he, like, walked kind of, like, weird. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. really liked that. De- like, there's some really subtle writing stuff that they did like that where I immediately knew what they were talking about. I've literally seen people. Like, yes. have you ever seen those uber-athletic people who are super athletic? And then they kind of, like... They like, just kind of, like, walk little, a little... Yes. Like a little hunched over or something, like just a little odd in real life. I like that. That felt so real. Yes, because <laughs> it, it like links your brain. You're like, oh, I know what that yes. is, you know. And it's cool because then you get to relate. I like little like character moments like that. Yeah, yeah. Also, like um, I think because we we talked about the whole um, you know tent thing and yeah. how they came in. They were talking a little about about the symbol and stuff, and I think it was uh, Arthur Weasley mm-hmm. was like. Oh, we shouldn't. I don't know. Remember exactly what he said, but he was like, "Oh, don't worry. It's just a symbol, right?" Or no, wait. Who was it? Shoot, it was I forgot. one of the like Victor Crumb or something. No, yeah, it was someone else that said it, and then um, uh, Arthur Weasley or one of the adults were like, "Oh no, that's the symbol for you know Voldemort. That's why yeah. we're so afraid, you know." Yeah. But then other people were like, "Oh, it's just a symbol, right?" Yeah. So what? What? Do you, what exactly? I mean. What do you think about that? Like, do you think you should be afraid of the symbol because it does represent something that could, you know, endanger things? Or should you try your best to ignore it because you don't want to give that symbol, you know, any sort of power over you or something? Mm, I don't know. I think that in in world, they were kind of brushing it off because they didn't want people to panic. I, I and think I so think too, that yeah. was kind of stupid of them. Yeah. Um, cause I feel like it, it felt more like, I don't know how to say it. It was, it was more like, like a, Arthur Weasley goes on like a little rant about it being like, Oh, well they used to do this every time they like, you know, when you saw that symbol, it was because your they family were gonna was attack. dead, your children have been or whatever. And so it was this like gut wrenching feeling. 
Yeah. Which I thought was super cool because it, it's almost taking that, I talk about this all the time, with villains where it's like, show how people react to the villain before the villain shows up or whatever, and that helps you fear the villain more. I think the story is doing that in a really kind of genius way where you see this symbol and as much as you know the government or whatever want to be like, oh, it's what it is. It's just a symbol, which I, it, technically it is, but it just gives you like a hint at the true terror that is the Death Eaters, that is Voldemort, and that, I mean, obviously, we know we will see, like, in the future. I thought yeah. that was kind of cool, because now when you see Voldemort, you're like, oh, this dude means business. Like, yeah. you kind of just get a feel of that history and the, and the terror that they, like, instilled during their reign or whatever. So I think it's a cool way to establish history. I feel like in world, I get why they're kind of ignoring it and being like, oh, it's just a symbol, because technically it is. But I thought, like, litter literarily no that's not a word that's not a word i don't know i like them using it as a literary device to kind of like hype up voldemort before he shows up yeah and the death eaters and stuff like that yeah because i was thinking a little bit like you know you know you don't want to give that symbol like a whole bunch of power obviously but if it does you know represent legitimate danger you do have to be a little wary yeah especially when it's linked to someone that everyone can't even say their name yeah So, yeah. you know, it was cool. It was interesting because a lot of times I do think, you know, you don't want to give p- too much power to things that don't really mean anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think they did a good demonstration of like very classically how people do deal with that where they're like, okay, don't, don't tell the press. Don't tell, you know, anybody. Yes. And then you can clearly see Arthur Weasley's like working freaking 24 seven trying to figure all this stuff out and hunt these people down. But they're like, everybody calm down. Like, nobody freak out. It's not a big yeah. deal because that doesn't help anything. So yeah. I, I like that. What do you think? Of the whole house elves. Yeah, because like, I was thinking about that too. So I don't know what to think of it. I, I, I can't give all of my thoughts because the arc isn't really done yet. Yes. I don't know where it's going. But it's very odd because obviously, like, in any of these fantasy worlds, if you take it, like, seriously, seriously, <laughs> it's like, like it is weird. slavery, right? <laughs> like, what? Like, it is like, okay, yeah. so obviously, if they were humans, like, that would be wrong. But I don't know because, like, I used to think the same thing about Star Wars where I was like, okay. But, like, aren't the droids kind of slaves? But then it's a fantasy world, so it's hard to tell because, you know, we are literally thinking in brains of, like, okay, well, all people have, you know, unalienable rights and we're all created equally. So it's impossible for me to, like, put myself... Because, you know, at the same time, they have the the garden gnomes that they're, like... They seem sentient, but they're, like, killing them and or chucking them. Like, they're like, oh, the cat likes eating garden gnomes. Yeah. And it's like, well, they could talk. They're sentient, so... It's weird because you're in a magic world, so I don't know what to think yet. I mean, I don't know if Hermione's right and that's the point they're going to make, or if she's not because we're in a magic world and so it's... I mean, I feel like Hermione's more towards the right side. I feel like that's what they're trying to show. Yeah. And I'll I'll elaborate more on that um, a little later, but as far as, like, you know, trying to figure out where that like line is this is the thing is like you gotta look at the story I feel like and see like okay how is this consistent to like other elements or something right okay so I mean you got some very exaggerated things Mm -hmm. a lot of times like you know Filch when he was talking about torture devices for kids children yes right and then okay Dumbledore allowing him to be in the school like Obviously, if you take that and place it into our world, you're like, that's oh, insane. Dude, yeah, like you're abusing that's children. Insane, What's wrong? Right? Same with Snape. Yeah, and other things like leaving a Cerberus there, all yeah, sorts yeah, of things, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, even Hagrid's like insane. Yeah. Right? So, you, can, I feel like you can't exactly um, like gauge like how... I'm just trying to figure out what they're trying to tell us. Because, like, you have to you have to gauge it within the world. That's what I'm saying, But I'm, yeah. like, kind of confused, and it's probably because we're just halfway. But, like, I don't know if... Because I don't know if... You know how... Because they keep doing the thing where it's like, well, the house elves are actually genuinely happy. Like, yeah, working for I free. Mean, so it's weird because I'm in a spot, and because we're halfway through, I can't tell if they're, like... You know, I've heard people say that, like, with slavery. So I don't know if it's, like, a commentary on that. Or she actually means that, and that's, like, a counterpoint... To what Hermione's saying, and she's taking it too seriously. Like, I don't know exactly what Rowling is trying to say. Yeah, so that's why I feel like it might necessarily not be wrong. Because 
I feel like Dumbledore is actually going about it the right way. Now, now look, I, like I said, I don't know. It's hard for me to gauge. It depends on how you want to judge the story. I don't know. It's hard for me to gauge. Obviously, I'm not like pro-slavery or anything. Jeez, let's like yeah, yeah. establish that, okay? Please, thank you. <laughs> um, but like in the fantasy element, uh, you know, they do kind of seem happy. And then at the same time, if they do want pay, like Dumbledore is willing to oblige them. Yeah. And at the same time, he is giving them, like, food and drink and a place to stay, and it seems like the majority of the house elves kind of, you know, are happy doing what they're doing. Yeah. And now, I guess you could make also an extreme argument being like, okay, well, they've been gaslit by society to believe that this is what... It's possible, yeah. I feel like that's a little bit of a, a hardcore, you know, philosophical approach to Harry Potter. Yeah. So I feel like it's kind of okay, and it, I I kind of get the vibes that the the book is kind of showing us that as well. Yes, because you don't want to be, I mean, you don't want to be treating them like dirt. Yes, right? but you can you know you treat them with respect and stuff. But just like how you know maybe a worker has their place or something, you you know I don't know they have that sort of like relationship or whatever. And I feel like if the elves, if these house elves are completely fine with it, then there's really not that much wrong with it. But one thing I can say is I feel like they might be going with um, the whole equality thing because of how much they're going into, um, you know, the whole Twinkie. muggle mudblood thing, right? And, you know, thinking about, like, okay, if Voldemort, you know, just over the course of the books, if Voldemort dislikes, you know, all these not pure blood creatures... <laughs> I feel like that might tie into like, well, wizards, you know, e- even the mudbloods or whatever, still treat other, you know, lesser beings like as an inferior yeah, species. Yeah, I just like I that. feel like it's impossible because then it's like yes, but it's so much more complicated than that because the muggle mudblood thing is it's not they're all human. Mm-hmm. So I can be like, yeah, that's morally wrong. Whereas this, I don't know because it's like well. In the wizarding world, is this the equivalent of like, you know, like you know, it's like well, the it's gnomes can talk and they treat them like a freaking bug that you smash in the, in the dirt, which seems kind of wrong to me, right? So it's like I can't tell how, it's you know, well, it's, it's kind hard of to it's hard to say because I'm really just trying not to get canceled in this thing because <laughs> this is fake slavery. So I'm not saying I'm pro slavery. I just well, this is, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but this is just a touchy topic, ladies no, and gentlemen. But, we want to take it seriously and like, no. like as um, a person like in the story, you know, you want to... I know. feel like it's okay though in the story because I feel like the house elves are... See, I feel like the, what the story is telling me at least, like what I'm getting from the story is that it's this idea and look, we don't know the whole thing of it, but it's this idea of like the nuance, right? Where, okay, the Malfoys, they're treating Dobby like trash. Um, Bagman? No. Who's the other guy? Crouch. Crouch. Barty yeah. Crouch. He's kind of treating his elf like trash. Yeah. Um, you know, Dobby wants pay, so Dumbledore gives him pay. But then a bunch of these other elves are totally chill with... Like, they get satisfaction out of uh, serving and cooking and doing whatever. And I'm assuming that they're giving, like... At least at Hogwarts, they're giving reasonable quarters and different things like that. And so I feel like if that's the case, and they are okay with it, then... Uh, maybe that's okay. I mean, it's such a it's such a hard thing because, like, when you give something sentience mm-hmm. that you know normally like doesn't have, like you would think like okay they treat them like animals, right? Yeah. But they have like sentience, so it's like okay, like in our world, you know, we're like, you know, humans are like the only thing with this complex of like reasoning. And yeah. Stuff, right. And so when you go to their world where, like, spiders can have complex conversations with humans, yeah. then it's like, okay, then are you a spider or what? Like, why? You know, if we end up running you over, then yeah. is that so That's why I'm like, I don't know. That's it's, why it's like, like a magic world, so that's why I'm not taking it as seriously. Yeah, I feel I'm just like not, it may not be um, as big of a thing. Because, you know, you want to do that, then we could be like, okay, well, the Vila, can we talk about that for a yes. second? Like. If that was in the real world, like, uh... Yeah. That's not allowed. Exactly. <laughs> so... I just think, like, if I was taking my own values and applying it there, I'd be like, okay, well, I, I don't 
care for the house elf thing. I, I don't really need like if I you know I, I don't know I, I kind of disagree with it. But if I was from their world, I might think of my I might have different values. Um, yeah, I don't know any anything. Else? I mean, the whole Yule Ball I thought was done really well. It felt very teenager accurate. Totally rooting for Hermione at this point. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Uh, one thing I have noticed is honestly, I really felt the teenagerness in this book. Yeah, well, I mean, if you what, what are they fourteen in this book now? Yeah, but sometimes yeah, so it, you know, it feels it feels on point for how old they are. I do. Yeah, I am. I am feeling that. You know. That little bit of tension, right? And yeah. people getting a little bit jealous. The wrong. way they did the Ron thing, I actually really liked <laughs> yeah. this in the book. Yeah. Because it felt so real. Ron also felt a lot more, a lot less, um, like, annoying a little bit for well, some reason. because you know what I was thinking about is I was like, in the movies, because you don't spend as much time with the other characters, you get annoyed almost at the movie for being like, why are we wasting time with Ron throwing a fit? Like, he hasn't done anything in this movie. You use him as just comedic relief. And then, like, he's being all yeah. pissy at Harry. Whereas, like, in the book, it's yeah, like, he yeah, feels right. like a character. And so the fact that he would kind of get pissed, it's like, it feels real. And it feels real. that That's how he'd react to them the way him and Harry are, like, being all stubborn. It's just like, I liked that. And it felt very real. and felt like how friends yeah. would fight. And they're all going through their, like, you know, their stuff. stuff. Like, yes. Ron is looking at, you know, other people. And Hermione is kind of, you know, getting a little bit, like... Oh, you know, you should be, you know, or not you should be, but... I really liked the whole, like, I really liked how perceptive Hermione... Like, I thought that was really funny to me. How, like, (laughs) they demonstrated something which I think is so totally true. How people people say, like, women are better, or they they mature socially. Yes. um, Faster than guys, which I feel like is a thousand percent accurate. Yes. Um, And I I loved how she was like... Yeah, Ron's jealous. And Harry's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, Harry was totally lost. He's like, Ron's being an idiot. And she was like, yeah, it's because of this. And he was yeah. like, that's so stupid. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. But that's dumb. And I, was, I just thought that, that whole, was like, cool. thing was really funny. And also, Harry's got his own issues. You know, he's he's having trouble opening himself up to, like, the adults and stuff. And he feels a little yeah. bit ashamed at times and embarrassed almost to, you know, show weakness or something like that, right? And he wants to... You know, like a father figure to confide in. And then Ron is, I feel like, starting to really, you know, understand, like, okay, you know, my family, I got a lot of brothers and stuff yeah, that are kind of yeah, better than yeah. me. Our family's not the richest thing. Right? He's starting to, like, yeah. I feel like people are starting to notice things. Yeah, you're about becoming themselves. more self aware, you know? right? So it's cool. Like, I mean, they're all going through their struggles and stuff. Yeah. I think that's really cool because I really noticed it. I really noticed it this time. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked, uh, I liked Pig Widgeon. Um, did we get him in the movie? We didn't get him in the movie, did we? I don't, I don't think, think we did. So. I don't know why we didn't. He was cool. I liked him. Yeah. Um, I liked the little bits we've been getting with Ginny. Just just everything. Yeah. I, I really have been enjoying this book so far. Matt I, uh... Oh, yeah, Matt. Okay, that's right. the other thing, too, that I'm really excited about in part two that we'll talk about more. I was so confused about the whole, like, switcheroo thing. Oh, you mean in the movie? Yeah, I don't know what the heck happened, so I'm hoping the book explains it, because I don't even know, is it actually Mad Eye? I don't know. I was always confused watching the movie, they didn't explain that very well to me, and it's probably because they didn't read the book, so... I'm pretty sure it's Crouch Jr., right? Okay. That is Mad Eye right now? Okay. I think, right? And then... Well, then I kind of like Crouch Jr. I mean, I... Yeah, I would... I need some, a little more clarification, I... I kind of forgot what happened in the movie. All I know is that wasn't um, the actual Mad-Eye. I don't remember when they switched, though, either. Like, do they switch after he comes into the hall? I forgot. I, yeah, right? Yeah, so, we gotta know. I don't remember. So, I'm, I am looking forward to that because that was something that I remember distinctly being like, what just happened? Oh, okay. Yeah, same. Mad-Eye's back. So, I'm kind of looking forward to, like, that. I've been really liking Harry and uh, Sirius. No, just yes. that dynamic and how he kind of like confides in Sirius and different things like that. I really like the way they were doing that. Yeah, and yeah, we have the second challenge coming up in part two. I'm so I'm excited. To I'm excited to see how they do that compared to the movies because challenge one totally different. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we'll talk about some more stuff like overall kind of in part two. I feel like this is kind of the first time we're splitting it up, so I'm I'm still kind of finding my way as to how to do this. But yeah, um, as always, thank you guys for watching. Part two is going to be up on Patreon for you guys. Like I said, hopefully you guys can bear with us. It, it's like an entire book, so it's it's very hard to do this. And 
you're gonna have to wait a week for part two which is how it's gonna have to go because it, it takes a while to read all this and we have a whole lot of other stuff that we're doing as well so bear with us and yeah thank you for joining us on all the other books so far thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video part two up on patreon